collecting things. Now there's a hobby. I used to collect hockey cards, but lately I've been more inclined to collect lifelong regrets. They say, he who dies with the most toys wins. After some careful thought, I figured out that the best way to win at this game we call life is by becoming a world-class compulsive hoarder. Roughly defined as disposophobia, compulsive hoarders are the ultimate pack rat, but also often the ultimate consumer. They will aggressively acquire anything and everything they can get their hands on, generally convinced that it's of great value, despite any evidence to the contrary. And they will then set about filling every room of their homes with this crap, to the point that most of the rooms can't be used for their intended purposes anyways. So, to help provide inspiration, I was going to, was going to, cover several champions of disposophobia. Now I say was, because after I finished doing my research... Infinity! doing my research, I realized that there are two brothers who are so high up on the heap of biodegrading newspapers and incomplete cutlery sets that there's really no use in talking about anyone else. That being said, I put some links to a few other interesting disposophobics over in the perfectly wonderful and horrible things section of handfulofminutes.com, such as Edward Trebus, a Pole who, while living in England, collected almost every single Elvis record ever released, and in fact went on to collect so much that he got a TV special done on him. So, who are these siblings I speak of? Why, they're New York's own Collier brothers, of course. First, we have the older brother, Langley, seen here, talking to his invisible stockbroker, and then we have the younger brother, Homer, of whom I could not find a photograph. This makes sense, though, really, given that the two brothers spent the last 20 years or so of their lives living as complete recluses in their Harlem home. Which brings us to the first reason they won a gold medal in the Compulsive Hoarding Olympics, dedication. The second, of course, comes for sheer mass of things collected. When the New York police eventually had to break down their door to investigate a terrible smell, they found no less than 103 tons of crap inside. But mass isn't everything, of course, there's also variety, and in this category, the brothers won a gold medal as well. Amongst other things, found within their home were... <gasps> baby carriages, a doll carriage, rusted bicycles, old food, potato peelers, a collection of guns, glass chandeliers, bowling balls, camera equipment, the folding top of a horse-drawn carriage, a sawhorse, Three dressmaking dummies, painted portraits, pinup girl photos, plaster busts, Mrs. Collier's hope chests, rusty bed springs, the kerosene stove, a child's chair, note, the brothers were lifelong bachelors and childless, more than 25,000 books, human organs, pickle and jars, eight live cats, tapestries, hundreds of yards of unused silken fabric, clocks, 14 pianos, both grand and upright, a horse's jawbone, banjos, violins, bugles, accordions, a graphone with records, and countless bundles of newspapers and magazines, some of them decades old. To cap it all off, there was also the chassis of the old Model T Langley had been tinkering with, in the hopes that he could turn it into a generator to provide power for the house. And, I'm pretty sure, two turtle doves. Yes, the brothers were compulsive hoarding champions, but they were also playing Katamari Damacy 60 years before anybody else ever even thought to. They also went above and beyond the usual disposophobic behavior when it came to protecting their hoard. Langley not only barred and boarded up all the windows in the house, he set up several booby traps. This is important not only to protect all the crap, but to protect his younger brother Homer, who in their respective later years had gone blind and lame. Sadly, it was these very same booby traps which brought their collecting days to an end. Remember that bad smell that I mentioned? The one that brought the police by to investigate and kick down the front door? Well, yeah, that was the foul stench of death. You see, uh, once the police had excavated enough of the crap to be able to actually move around, they eventually found the recently deceased body of Homer, sitting in his chair, having perished from a mixture of malnutrition and cardiac arrest. But the older, more able-bodied Langley was nowhere to be found. Acting off an anonymous tip that said that he had been sighted on a bus leaving town, the police instigated a manhunt. The manhunt came to a close after nine days, when the police, after having excavated about 83 tons of the crap, discovered that Langley had never left the house at all. Turns out, he'd fallen prey to one of his own booby traps while crawling through one of many tunnels made from stacked newspapers to be able to get from room to room, trying to bring a meal to his brother Homer. Langley is certainly not the only compulsive hoarder to die under a pile of his own crap, but would you deny him the posthumous gold medal he should get for dying under a pile of his own crap while 
trying to bring a meal to his blind and crippled brother? So there you go, two dirty old eccentrics who lived amongst literally tons of garbage that were able to live with something that I doubt any other compulsive order ever has or ever will. Nobility. Finally, if this example of two exemplary compulsive hoarders is not enough to get you started, well, I, I could mention that in 2004, the University of Iowa completed a study which showed that damage to the right medial prefrontal cortex of the brain often leads one to becoming a compulsive hoarder. I trust to use this information wisely. <laughs>